This TikTok and its response are both going viral. And of course, it touches on the very hot topic of Asian women not wanting to date Asian guys. Yeah, let's run the clip. The first one is from uh, Carol Carbonated. It's now deleted, but we got it here for you. A good like 70% of the time whenever I see discourse on Asian women dating non-Asian men, but then the Asian American community, a lot of the times it's Asian men up in arms about it. And they're like, oh, Asian girls say that they won't do us because uh, we remind them too much of their fathers and brothers. What do we look, do we do we all look though like to you? That's internalized racism. And like, here's the thing, I can't speak for every Asian American woman who doesn't particularly want to date an Asian man. Uh, but for me personally, no. No, it's the it's not the way you look. It's the way you behave. It's the way you act, including the way you're acting right now, responding to this video. Um, I was raised with an older brother, and so I am very, very cognizant of the fact that I was raised differently than he was because I am a woman, all right? And don't you fucking try and tell me that Asian culture has no influence on that. It's not because we're Asian, uh, because fucking... Confucianism 100% still affects my family dynamic, okay? And so I'm not going to willingly, knowingly invite someone into my life that I think has had the same upbringing uh, to think about women the way my brother and father were uh, without having broken that cycle. Oh, man. She came in hot. And she yeah. was very, very antsy. Like, she was very bothered by this, I guess. Or, well, or she was, some... like, tweaking, to be yeah. honest. Hey, bye. Yeah. Wait, I'm not taking away from, like... Whatever trauma she's been through, though, I'm not saying that it's not legit. It totally could be legit. Let's play the response from Izzy Eternal. Stop blaming Asian men for your internalized racism because what you're doing is you're holding every single Asian man accountable for the dysfunction that you grew up with. And it's not fair to the Asian men that are out here doing the work and that have identified the very same social issues that you take exception to. And respectfully, this is the kind of thing people work out in therapy. They examine how the trauma they experienced in their formative years shapes their current perception. And if you perceive a man's Asianness as a red flag, you very well may have horseshoed yourself into racism. And I hope the irony of that is not lost on you. The, the idea that you might be so open-minded and so progressive, but yet don't date Asian men. And also, I don't like this idea of Asian men being painted as bad guys for wanting to understand society's aversion to them. Because it's not just Asian women, it's other groups as well. And it's no coincidence that there's an uptick in interest in Asian men when things like K-pop or anime get more popular. So it's worth entertaining the possibility that this aversion to Asian men is something else that's happening at the subconscious level. Remember, stop Asian hate includes Asian men. Boom! So Andrew, it goes viral. The initial TikTok goes viral. The response goes viral, mm -hmm. and it just generates tens and thousands of comments and thousands and thousands of shares. Yeah, I think we got to talk about it, guys. Lots of stuff in the comment section. I'm going to give you our own perspective as well, so please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Uh, is it interesting, Andrew, that this debate has taken place on Reddit, <laughs> YouTube, Instagram, but it's it, it's always new every platform that it goes to. I remember hearing this debate on Facebook 15 All years right. ago. What I will say this, and watching TikToks, especially from the 20-year-olds, let's the just Gen say. Z's. The Gen Z TikToks, which I'm not fully Gen Z. I keep up with it, but I'm not. That's not where I come from. But it's really interesting to see this conversation evolve, David. I think when we were, you know, let's just say a while back when we were making videos about this, Years ago, the the a lot of the diss on Asian guys would be like, oh, you look like my brother, or no, like, I just didn't grow up with you guys, or like, oh, they remind me of my father, and we always thought those were really stupid reasons, because they were very shallow, and it didn't really seem like the reason, to be honest, but the new Gen Z conversation is like, Confucianism is causing these men to act this way and be patriarchal and it's causing me and I just don't want somebody else with the same upbringing. I'm not going to lie. That is a somewhat fair explanation even though I don't like, I, it doesn't, she's making a blanket statement on all Asian guys. Right. I mean, I think clearly she probably had a, a bad childhood yeah. from what I can tell. But blaming Confucianism specifically is a more newer generation thing to do, which I think is interesting to me. Right. I mean, I think the here's the thing. Anybody should do what they feel like is the best for them. Yes. But it did seem like she was almost like trying to launch a fundamentalist campaign against Asian men. Right. But I'm not saying for her own situation, maybe even if, I don't know if she's been to therapy, but even if I was her therapist, I would say, if you feel like you super get triggered from dating Asian guys, then maybe just stay away from it for yourself. Right, right. It's true that if she is traumatized and somehow of the Asian guys that she meets or sees that they say something that 
sounds like something that is related to her trauma. That is unfortunate. Oh, uh, hey, like, why Why do you need that uh, septum piercing? Oh, my gosh, it's a <laughs> trauma. No, listen, yeah, yeah. she could have went through some No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so everybody has legit reasons, and everybody should be able to date who they want, love who they want, of course, of course, Do of course. what makes them happy. Of course. Um, what Izzy Eternal is saying, and obviously a lot of people are agreeing with him, is that it sounds like she has internal racism and she's taking it out and assuming that and putting that on all other Asian guys. Well, it sounded Which, like she was trying to launch a political campaign against yeah, Asian guys. Yeah, almost. she's saying, why would anyone ever want to date someone who's raised the same as you, me? If, if I would never want that, I want to get away from it. Listen, individually, do what you need to do, okay? But I do think this. Her account, her TikTok account is now private and I'm sure it's because of the flood of comments that she got. But what I'm saying is like, if you post something on the internet, because she's like really mad that like Asian guys are commenting and like some of them are definitely commenting mean things, which I don't support, but also some of them are just trying to have this conversation. And I'm just like, if you put something out on the internet and you're like, you know, it's negative towards Asian guys, you don't expect to get some comments. Well, she wasn't she asking for a flame war? So you're asking for a flame war. So already right off the bat, you want the drama. You want to drum people's emotions. You wanted up. all the smoke. You could can't you could turn off the comments. You could block comments. You could make your account private from the get-go. But of course, David, people want their TikToks to get spread. But when they get spread, and I know this from being on the internet. And I have a TikTok. I have an Instagram page. Hey, you got 12 million on your last video. Yeah, we I, we got a 12 million a view TikTok. I have a 1 million view comedy clip on Instagram. And let me tell you this. There were people in the, who most people enjoyed it, but some people in the comments try to flame me. So the flame will come. Right. You just know it's coming. To and deal uh, with it. I will say this. When you type in Asian girls, white guys on TikTok, there's like 500 videos that pop up. You could literally spend your whole day clicking through so, videos, right? Yeah, exactly. David, real quick, before we get in the comment section, do you think her reasoning is a more, I guess, specific and advanced reasoning, I guess, even though the way she did this video was very like, like, I guess, I guess the tone was very like uh, offensive. But well, she was blaming it on uh, the application of Confucianism. Is that funny? That's it's kind of like an interesting. It's certainly deeper cut for That's sure. And it's more intellectual. Reason. You'd have to really understand, you know, Confucius versus Lao Tzu versus Mencius and all this other stuff. You really want to look into it. I'll say this though. And I'm not defending anybody's choices or not affirming them or, or, or trying to negate them. I do think different races act differently. Yeah. No, so I'm saying that it's like, it is like when people are like, oh, if you'd made this choice just because this person looks that way, oftentimes people look a different way and they come from a different culture. Yeah, because how you look may be, and it is related to the community you come from, possibly your value system. And if your value system is different, your personality might be different. Yeah, and your upbringing, your cultural teachings, and how much your grandmother or grandfather, what origin country yeah. they come from, and how I much think, they I think it just sounded like those teachings she on. was just writing off all Asian guys in a very angry way and like trying to blame it like, like why would I ever want to date an Asian And guy? why would any Asian woman That's want how, to? Almost yeah. like basically saying... But I felt like it was interesting, though, because she was trying to take... No, it's not about the look. It's not about the look. It's about the Confucianism. Do dudes be a little triggered on the internet? Though, like, they were probably were they saying mean stuff? I didn't get to see the comment section because we'll video never know, out. man. Listen, if you guys are more familiar with this case, let us know. Anyway, let's get in the comment section. Somebody said, "As an Asian woman, I'm gonna clap for you, Izzy Eternal, because I've lived with a toxic father and I'm currently dating an amazing Asian man." So basically, she's saying that her negative experience with her father does not serve for like she just found an Asian guy that didn't remind her of her father. Yes, there are Asian guys out there who are not your father. Or brother. This is uh, from <clears throat> PP Poo Poo. It was a hilarious name, by the way. My problem with their video is that she wants to date non-Asian men, and usually it's code word for ugly-ass white dudes. Uh, it's sometimes, not my word, guys. Sometimes it is, yes. Um, other people say, oh, man, you crushed it, bro. Um, other people were just saying, thank you, thank you. Uh, man, I spit out my <clears throat> drink agreeing with listening to you, Izzy Eternal. And someone said, you know it's getting bad when even non-Asian guys are starting to see through Asian women's evil. <laughs> what a way to say Yo, it. Yo, that's funny. Um, some guys were like, why are you speaking for us? And this other black guy said, 
Can anybody explain why Asian men have never spoken up for themselves? And then this guy said they do, but they get gaslighted and get called incels into oblivion. Even mainstream Asian female writers are trying to push in Mr. Asian narrative. MR Asian. MR Asian. Somebody said, great call out by him. And the fact that it's not done by an Asian male gives less ammo to the haters because they usually be like, oh, you guys are just butt hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the good thing is, is that Izzy Eternal, I'm assuming, is not Asian. But he's, well, he's like a cool looking black guy. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. He's a Gen Z anime black guy. I don't know. But uh, I don't know him as a person. But shout out to him. But I think that he was able to articulate the reasons. And when you have another person of another race speak up and say the same thing, it helps. It's, it's kind of like being an ally in this situation. It's just like if Asians speak up for black people here or they do this for that. Or, or white people speaking up for black people during the civil rights movement. Right? It's different. It all matters. It because all, it does. you're not part of the group that's being affected, so you can't be accused of being feeling so. slighted or being bitter. Yeah, it's but, not about you being self, oh, well, you're just doing it because you're in this situation. It's like, no, I'm doing it because I objectively think that it is a little bit messed up. But you know what? It always kind of was weird to me because I was always like, you know, on the internet, they're like, oh, why are all these Asian men on the internet insecure? But I was like, literally because they're saying in their position in society it lacks security. Listen, so wouldn't you, if you lack security in your positioning, it would be natural to come across potentially as insecure because you're not secure. Yeah. That's the definition yeah. of being insecure. Yeah, I think that especially though on the internet, it can come out and a lot of dudes have a bad reaction or they want to comment and lash out on the internet, which is not the most efficient way to deal with it. It either. doesn't get people to understand your perspective better. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it probably feels good for those guys to do it. So I understand why dudes leave those comments. Right, it's like uh, leaving, hitting a punching bag or something. Yeah, I like get that. it. But it's not... He's not going to solve it. Um, this girl, Bao Bei, said, what a smart man. And then other people said, well, when it comes to the self-hating Olympics, black men probably come in second right after Asian women. Mm. That's probably what he meant. And somebody said, oh, please, the only reason Izzy Eternal cares about Asian women being with white men is because they want Asian women for themselves. So this was like a lot of arguing about his incentives. And other people try to call out black guys here because black guys famously, you know, snow bunnies date a lot of blonde women. But... A lot of blonde women also really love that archetype of like a cool black athlete or rapper or musician. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, this video is not about that topic, guys. But yes, there is, I guess, many conversations to have about that. Right. Uh, some girl said, I had a little phase when I was a teenager. I thought we would have grown out of this by now. And then somebody said, oh, yeah, girls, they always want to have fun with the white boys. And now they're looking for something more serious. They shack up with an Asian guy. Whatever works, man, it is is what it is. Things happen, man, for sure. I mean, or I don't fall for it. Whatever. Your choice, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Somebody said, look at every Western romance film led by an Asian woman lead. They're all with white guys, and they were always directed by Asian women. Mm. Um, it, it, This happens, too, to be uh, honest. There's I mean, some truth to that. Um, Somebody said, let's be real. All of us aren't Asian or white, and we can clearly see that Asian women fetishize white men just as much as vice versa. There, People were basically saying, like, it takes two hands to clap, Andrew. Basically saying that, yes, white guys get called out for fetishizing Asian women, but how come Asian women never get called out for fetishizing white guys? Yes. Um, I'll say this. I think it's different for every couple. Like, for some, it might just be, like, the best fit. But for certain, like, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying when something happens, like, let's say 10 million times, it's hard to categorize all 10 million under one generalization. Yeah, you can't. You can't. 10 million but, people is too many. You but can't. I will say this. There's probably some portion that fit anybody's stereotype of what their stereotypical reason is. Yeah. But there's ones that won't fit into those boxes. Yeah, and I think what... You need, you need to realize is that this girl, Caro, does not speak for even most Asian women. Uh, maybe 10, speaks for like 10, 15, 20% of Asian women at most. If that, maybe 10%, but it's like... Maybe five, who knows? Yeah, I, so extreme, it might not yeah. be that much, yeah, the way that she feels, but um, I think that obviously when you put stuff on the internet, it almost, it always sounds like you're the representative for that group. Like even if whatever we say... If we say, you know, as an Asian, people are going to assume that we're talking about it for 100% of Asians, you know? Right, right. Especially a group that doesn't really have a lot of mainstream representation. Yeah. It actually ends up weighting the I, online I, creators, like, more. What, what I think that, like, a lot of 
Asian women don't fully understand and maybe Asian guys don't do a very good job of explaining it is like, why are all these reasonable, educated Asian men so bitter and mad? Why are they? Right. Never committed any crimes. Yeah, this is never an, did anything yeah. really no, illegal they grow in their up life. Like, uh, they grow up like middle class or whatever. They get educated and they still have these feelings. Now, yeah. no, no, they th may be traumatized in right. their own way, but we have to, why don't we ask why? And Asian guys, I think we need to do a better job of like either explaining ourselves or dealing with it somehow. So Because it's like, listen, people on the internet, like on the outside, like Asian women or other people just see angry Asian guys on the internet. It's true. They see the comments under like an Asian woman celebrity that's dating another white guy and they're just like, oh, I hate this person, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, but why are all these like rational Asian guys feeling this way? We, we should understand why. Like we should have more conversations about why yeah. they feel that way. It reminds me of when like Albert <clears throat> Einstein wrote that stuff about China and everybody was like, you know, Albert Einstein, he was the smartest man in modern history, invented numerous things, but he was completely off base about what he was like writing was so, I was like, dude, we gotta be just like, we have to, Anyway, man, um, somebody said Asian women are white adjacent. There's always Asian women in white spaces and they want to be white so bad. Um, I'll say this. I think that a lot of Asians can potentially feel white adjacent mm -hmm. if they try hard mm -hmm. enough. But it seems a lot easier for women that if they choose that path, they can like slip into it much easier, I think, than a guy. I think a guy, you're going to get so many maybe times where you encounter hostility or things where you get left out where you're going to go, ah, I don't know if this plan's going to work for me. Mm. Um, somebody just said, remember, some of the traits they try to avoid from traditional Asian men are just as bad, if not worse, than white men. Somebody said, no, they're not. For example, in traditional Asian relationships, the family often moves in with the couple. That would never happen in white relationships. So there was some arguments in the thread back and forth of like, but it is Confucianism. They are, those are unappealing traits. And then I was like, yeah, but how many people that are Asian American are really having their parents move in with them? A, a much lower rate than our parents had their parents live in with them. Right, right. Well, because it, it varies. Some people are more with the old ways and some people are with the new ways completely and some people are a hybrid mix, right? Somebody just said, there's a reason why the 4B movement exists. I don't agree with it all, but I can understand women's frustration with Asian men. And what is the 4B movement? It's South Korea's uh, feminist movement and it's to renounce the, uh, I guess in Korean, these words start with Bs or sound like they have Bs. But anyways, it's referring to sex, child rearing, dating and marriage with men they're stepping out of it. They're like, they're like, I'm out of this. I'm not doing this anymore. So that's partially why South Korea's birth rate is pretty low right now. That's just in one of the reasons is because there's also a very strong 4B feminist movement. And it is to combat uh, what they said is much, a lot of toxic traits in uh, South Korea. Right. And, but, but that's yeah. in Asia. We're, that is in this Asia. is not Asian America, right? No. I mean, and, and I think some of it does carry over a little bit, but I can't speak for our family. I, I don't know what family she comes from. There's a lot of messed up Asian families out there. So More than people think, that's apparently. That's fine. She I mean, can talk, put them all on display. Ain't nobody saying you can't feel the way you want to feel, you know? And again, I thought this guy, Izzy, just did a good job of, of replying back. He, he articulated himself. Wow, I appreciate that. I, I don't even agree a hundred percent of what he said, but essentially this, you put out something negative towards Asian men first on the offensive. And yes, a lot of frustrated Asian guys will clap back on you. Right. That's true. Right, right. On the internet, on the internet, your life will be fine, but on the internet. Um, I think there's so much that go into these statistics that are true. And like we said, anybody should go do whatever they need to do to make their life happy. I mean, honestly, you only get one chance at this life on earth, depending on what belief system you ascribe to. But I'll say this. It is really interesting when you look at stats, when you look at like, you know how like low D1 Asian athletes are in like contact sports versus like non-contact sports like golf or tennis. Mm -hmm. It's like swimming. It's insane. The amount of Asian D1 athletes that are in those sports Versus like contact sports. It's like not even close. It might be like 10X, 20X. Um, you know what I mean? Or why do Asians make up like 40% of America's doctors when they're only 6 to 7% of the population? That must mean that a lot of parents are raising their kids to become doctors, right? 
And I just feel like there's all these stats about like, you know how like in the white world, if you're a short white guy and there's a tall white guy, everybody always makes fun of the short white guy. And they're like, ah, this short white guy is going to have a hard time finding a mate. Or if you're like a redhead, like Conan O'Brien with freckles, how come it seems like so acceptable? Everybody's like, oh, these redheads, they're the outcasts. They're going to have a harder time in life. And that's just like really widely accepted. Mm -hmm. But then like all of a sudden, if like Asian guys are like, yeah, we feel like we're like the short redhead. And not that it's not changing with the advent. Izzy Eternal talked about it with K-pop and anime and various other forms of representation. Mm -hmm. But like we felt like that redheaded, freckled, short stepchild for a long time. Right. And then it's like, but it's like, you can't talk about that. Right. Yeah. So I just think that there's like, there's just these things in society and they're all true, but it's just like, it's acceptable to talk about some aspects of marginalization, but not other aspects of marginalization. Very interesting to me. Ultimately, um, where do you see this discussion going, Andrew? 500 videos on TikTok. It's probably going to be a year from now, 5,000. It's just going to be individual people that are going to have that conversation come to their page. And uh, yeah, I, I wish there was, uh, I guess, some type of, better way to have this conversation because anytime there's one person that just comment and then they get a bunch of comments that's not really a conversation it's not really a conversation it's uh someone shouting something and then just people kind of yelling from the stands yeah so it doesn't really matter i think there needs to be maybe i'd like to see some more female influencers talk about it uh the only ones that i've seen sort of defending asian guys hardcore are maybe like only fans creators i'll do a podcast about it if someone has a good podcast i'll jump on and talk about it please come on the hot pot boys anyway guys let us know what you think carol carbonated versus izzy eternal it went viral on tiktok i love covering tiktok stuff it's so humanistic people are just regular people they're not trying to be creators and thinkers and writers and think all writery let us know what you think in the comment section below until next time with the hot pot boys we out peace, peace.